Hey, it's Norm from Tested, and first of all, Happy New Year. It's 2015. Where did last year go? We're off to CX next week, but uh, I wanted to shoot this video at home to talk about a new piece of hardware I've been testing that I'm really excited about. Uh, about a year ago, we wrote on Tested a story explaining why you shouldn't buy one of these new sub $1,000 4K monitors. A Dell had one, Asus had one, both under $1,000, about 28 inches, running at really high resolutions. And on paper, it seemed like, oh, this was would be the one to get. But you shouldn't have got them for two reasons. One, because they were TN panels as opposed to IPS panels. And TN panels don't cover the full uh, sRGB spectrum. The second reason we told you not to buy one of these old panels was uh, they didn't run at 60 hertz at native resolution. So while you could you know, show desktop at 3840 by 2160, uh, if you use a HDMI or DisplayPort connection, it would only run at 30 hertz. And I gotta tell you, there is a noticeable difference between 30 hertz and 60 hertz, especially when some people are running games now and running monitors now at well over 120 hertz, for example. Well, uh, back in November, Dell announced two new 4K monitors that I think address those issues. And I have one of them right here. I've been testing it for a couple weeks. This is Dell's P2715Q, and it's a $700 4K monitor that runs at uh, 27 inches. And I actually got it for a really good price with coupons, holiday coupons, about 550 bucks shipped. And when I got this monitor and I set it up, uh, it comes with a mini DisplayPort cable, plugs right into my GTX 980, uh, I had three primary concerns with this. One, how would this monitor work with Windows scaling? Is Windows 8.1 at a point right now where I can run this monitor alongside a 2560 by 1600 30 inch monitor with different pixel densities, different scaling, and would that work well? That was question one. Question two, uh, what was the image quality like? So this is an IPS panel, this is a 60 hertz panel, but does this cover my needs as a photographer? Is it good enough for someone who would, does video editing, for example? How does it compare to an ultra sharp, you know, a, a monitor with almost full Adobe RGB coverage? That was question two. Question three, how does it work for gaming? I know a lot of people play games and are really interested in running games at this incredible high resolution, and can you run games at a stable frame rate? And what games can you run? So I want to test all three things, and I think I have some answers for you guys. So one, in terms of Windows scaling. Windows 8.1 actually does an okay job, much better job than Windows 8 or Windows 7 did at resolving different resolutions, different scalings, if you're running a multi-monitor configuration, or even a single monitor. So you can run a monitor at its native resolution, which is recommended, highly recommended, and then you can scale the UI elements, the Windows Explorer, the text you see, the, the other applications, um, to higher resolu or lower resolutions, I guess, but higher scaling, 125%, 150%, 175%, or even 200%. That's basically what uh, Apple's Retina display monitors do. Um, they run really high resolution displays and then scale to 200%, and so you have about a two to one multiplier, and the, uh, integer based multipliers are better. I didn't want to run this at 200%, so I tested it at like 125% and 150%. And you know, it, not all the applications work well. The good thing is that if you're running two displays, you can actually run them at different scaling. I can have the 30 inch monitor run at 100%, so one pixel is one pixel. And I can have this 4K monitor run at 150%, so they kind of match. So when you slide a window between the two, it doesn't shrink suddenly or enlarge suddenly and fill up the screen. But with some applications like Photoshop, that it runs independent of any window scaling. Photoshop, for example, will want to run at 100% one-to-one scaling, pixel-to-pixel -pixel scaling, regardless of your window scaling setting. Uh, I think that makes sense, because you want your image to be the best quality possible. You don't want there to be any software scaling creating any artifacts in your image. And Photoshop does have an experimental setting where you can scale the UI, just the UI, the interface, to 200%. I've been using that. But other Adobe applications, like Lightroom, which I use very regularly, and 
even Premiere, they don't work like Photoshop. Light, both Lightroom and, and Premiere scale based on Windows, and I don't like that. I would rather run it 100% scaling, one-to-one -one pixel, and have a full 1080p video fit in just a quarter of the screen that artificially pump that up. Um, and not get exactly the image I want. So still some things to work out, I think, in Windows scaling. Hopefully Windows 10 will resolve some of these problems. Now in terms of image quality, Adobe does ship this monitor with a factory tested spec sheet saying that there's uniform brightness across all the quadrants. Um, there's a, it's basically 98% sRGB coverage, but I want to do my own testing. So I got this, it's a Spider 4 Elite uh, from Data Color. It's a, color, um, it's a monitor calibration tool and also lets me run diagnostics on my monitors. I ran them on both this 4K monitor and the 30 inch, the 2560 by 1600 display. And you know, not too surprising. This, uh, the, the old monitor, which I bought a long time ago for well over $1,000, it's an ultra sharp. It has much better color representation than the 4K monitor. The ultra sharp had about 100% sRGB coverage and over 95% Adobe RGB, which is what a lot of professional photographers use if they're sending their images to a professional printer. On the 4K monitor, on this Dell 20, uh, P2715Q, I was getting really good image quality. The colors were about 98%, like Dell said, on the sRGB uh, range, and then Adobe RGB only about 70%. Now, does that matter? I think if you're working on the web, if you're never printing images out, and even if you're just editing video, I think sRGB is enough. That's what the web runs on. Uh, Adobe RGB is gonna be important if you are a professional, if you are sending your images, if you're doing Illustrator work, Photoshop work, Lightroom work, and sending to a printer for magazine printing or for qual high quality uh, archival prints, uh, then you'll want closer to that 100% Adobe RGB. I think a lot of people look at those specs and not realize what are their needs, and for my needs, I think that 98% sRGB is good enough for me. Now you also, because this is an ultra sharp, you don't get a lot of color uh, calibration tools built into the monitor. You can change brightness, you can change contrast, and you have a different color temperature presets, um, but uh, you don't get all the settings you would with a much higher end monitor. Uh, the color calibration tool that I got did help with this, and I have adjusted it for both daylight and nighttime uh, for this room. So finally, games. How does this monitor game at 3840 by 2160? And I think surprisingly well. It will depend on what games you play, and I'm using a top-of-line graphics card, one single NVIDIA GTX 980. A lot of people recommend, if you wanna play 4K, a dual video card setup. I don't think you need a dual video card setup, but it depends what games you play. I tested it with games like Alien Isolation, which I could run natively at 4K, beautiful. AA on, AA off, I was getting above 45 frames per second stable frame rate. Uh, a game like Metal Gear Solid V, Ground Zeroes, that just came out, uh, I was able to run it 4K with AA off, above 45, above 60 FPS. Um, and because NVIDIA's GeForce Experience let me, lets me do some super sampling and trick the game to think I'm running even a higher resolution, I could take screenshots, not play the game, but take screenshots at least at 8K resolution, 7,600 pixels wide, amazing screenshots. People have been doing it for a long time on gaming forums, and it's, it's a really cool thing. And one of the games I love playing now, Elite Dangerous, 90 FPS at 4K native, it's fantastic. Uh, I still think you need to turn some AA on if you're using 4K. Uh, for for uh, vector images, you can see a little bit of the jaggies, uh, but again, it depends on how close you're sitting. But comparing a 4K display to uh, a, a even a 30 inch 2560 by 1600 display, gaming at 4K is unbelievable. Uh, if you don't wanna play at native resolution, you can actually run this at any other resolution, even at 2560, even at uh, 1440p, and um, the scale, the scaler will actually make it look fine. It's it's great, um, but 4K really is a fun place to be. Um, I've downloaded some sample 4K videos, but again, it's there's not a lot of 4K content out there. You know, YouTube 4K has low bit rates. Uh, even the movie trailers and some of the time lapse footage you can download at 4K. You can tell that the bit rates just aren't in there. Don't even think about streaming it at 4K. So really, this is a the reason to get a 4K monitor is for productivity. If you want to do a video editing 
editing, like I said earlier, and get your full image quality in, in your video editing UI. If you want to do photo editing, that's the reason to get it. For gaming, that's just a nice bonus, but you're going to need a great graphics card. Uh, this monitor does have a ton of ports. There is HDMI um, not 2.0, unfortunately. I guess that's one of the downside about it, but there is a display port in, display port out for daisy chaining, a mini display port. Uh, some people have reported some issues with this monitor um, in the mini display ports um, not being recognized from time to time, and I've actually ran into that problem myself. I solved it just by unplugging the monitor and plugging it back in, but from all reports, Dell has been pretty good about exchanging this monitor, um, no questions asked. They have like a zero dead pixel policy. If you have one dead pixel, they'll exchange it with a three-year warranty. Um, so I'm actually pretty happy with this uh, 4K monitor. It's the first 4K monitor I've really used for desktop use, and I don't see myself switching back to the 30-inch, uh, the 2560 by 16, uh, 1600 monitor anytime soon. It's a really exciting time for new technologies. I got this one, like I said, for about 550 bucks. I know some people online got it for like 500 bucks with a holiday coupon, but its list price is 700 bucks. If you can get it for under 600 bucks, I think it's a good deal. This is Dell's P2715Q, and we'll be off at CS where I'm sure we'll see plenty more 4K monitors, 4K TVs, new stuff. So stay tuned on Tested, and we'll see you back in the office next time. Bye.